Today, we are going to add some spiritual notes to our OneNote notebooks. If that sounds interesting to you, stay with me. Well, hi everyone, my name is Crystal. I'm from A Crystal Clear Life, where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. And today, uh, I would like to talk to you about some spiritual notes. Now, you know, we have lots and lots of followers of this channel, uh, and I do have a couple pastors and a chaplain uh, who are followers, and they have asked me uh, if I could talk a little bit about how I might keep some spiritual notes or a spiritual notebook um, in OneNote. So today I don't have a whole notebook set up for spirituality yet. Uh, I just kind of keep it stored throughout uh, different places of my planner, but I did combine some things in a section for you today uh, so that you guys could take a look at some of the things that I have used in the past and maybe they would be helpful for you. Now, with that being said, I know that a lot of people love the search feature uh, that is in OneNote. And, you know, if you have done a lot of reading and you've done a lot of, you know, taking notes on different things in OneNote and you've looked at some, you know, literary cr criticisms and that kind of thing, um, you may have a lot of information stored in OneNote that might help you put together sermons or that kind of thing. So, you know, you could always go up and do a search on, you know, whatever verse and chapter you might be preaching on or studying about, and you might find some insight there from the notes that you've already collected. So just like I say, OneNote is a great tool for students. I think it is also a great uh, tool for preachers, teachers, um, you know, all of those kinds of things, because as you store things in OneNote and you do those searches, you can start to see those connections being made. Um, and that's really cool. So I, th I think I like that a lot. Um, but today I just want to talk to you about two pages, uh, that I have. Uh, so let's jump into the computer and we'll take a look at that. All right. Well, as you can see here, uh, on my screen, I have a actually a printout. It is a PDF. This is something that I created uh, for my church, uh, people at my church to use. Uh, so it was on the church website as a PDF that people could download and they could, um, you know, put it in their uh, binder and take to, you know, to church with them if they would like to. Um, so I took a look at this and it's, you know, got it today is the key verses, what worship songs might have been sung, the sermon title, a large place for notes, and then prayers down at the bottom. Okay. Pretty simplistic, but the folks at church seem to like it. So, uh, I've left it on the webpage for them. Okay. Now, if you talk about doing something like this in digital format in OneNote so that you would have it, you know, to review and to search through and all those kinds of things, basically, you know, me and my love of tables, I took this information and I made a table. So let's look at that. All right. So down here, I'm going to scroll in and make this bigger. So you're not distracted by all of the words on the other side of the screen. What I basically did in this place is I made a two column table. Here's one column. Here's the second column. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve 10, 12 rows. Okay. And what I did is I simply took those words, sermon notes, today is, what the sermon title is, who preached it, uh, the key Bible verse that was used. And actually I have that twice because in many churches there might be an Old Testament lesson or a Psalm or, um, you know, something like that. And then a New Testament lesson or a gospel lesson or something like that. So oftentimes a sermon will include multiple verses. So I wanted to give a place to record both of those things. Okay. Then I have a place down here for me or the person who's using this to take notes about what the sermon was about. I also put in a place for the worship songs that went along with that sermon. Um, and then at the bottom, you know, I added a place for prayers, uh, concerns that people might have and joys that they want to celebrate in their prayers. 
And then I just added another box at the bottom that says other notes. There may have been an announcement that was made at church or something that you might have thought about that you want to research further, um, you know, something like that. So I wanted you to have a place to do that. Okay. All right. Now, this is what it looks like when I created it in simple table form. And this is what it looks like when you fill it out and you use it. So this was um, a sermon that was preached. I put the title of the church here because if you're somebody like me, when you travel around, you go to different churches um, and you visit those churches. And it's always interesting uh, to record the information about the churches that you were at. Okay. And I put the date in there. The title of the sermon was here, press on. And this is who preached that sermon. And in this particular sermon, there was only one key verse. And, and that happened to be Philippians 3, 12 through 16. Okay. So all I did is I went out to the web and I copied in Philippians 3, 12 through 16 from Bible Gateway, which is one of my favorite um, Bible, you know, um, online Bible readings. And, uh, let's see, I left in there the links about the study, uh, also, uh, which I thought was interesting if I wanted to go back and do further study. Okay. Since there was only one verse, this gets left open. And then down here, I had a place for the notes that I wanted to add that I wrote while we were, uh, you know, at the church service listening to this sermon. And I listed the hymns that we sung and then down here at the bottom, I also had a place for the concerns that people lifted up during the service, the joys that people had uh, that they also wanted to share. And then other notes that came up. One thing was the church conference coming up in October. So I need to remember that. Um, and then start planning for Advent. Okay. Now, because this is in my personal notebook, two things are going to get added once I get home and I start reviewing this. I'm going to look at church conference there and I'm going to go up to my tags list, uh, which I have up here. And I'm going to add this as a, uh, a church task. Okay. So that's going to be something that I know that I need to put on my calendar and I need to prep for that. And this is also going to become a church task because I need to start planning for the Advent season that is coming up near the end of November. Okay. All right. So even though this is my sermon notes, it also had some actionable items on there for me. Uh, so, you know, I have that in place. All right. So there it is. Sermon notes looks pretty simple when you just create it as a table like this, but then once you flush it out and you start adding things, uh, you know, you can do that as well. So, Another great thing that I love about this is maybe you want to add, you know, a, a video or something in here that you like about this particular verse. I know at our church, we always try to do a ch children's sermon. Uh, and I have other children that I work with that I like to share that kind of thing with. So what I'm going to do is I've just gone out to the web. I have looked for a video for a children's sermon, uh, and it's somebody that I like. I have copied that link and I'm going to bring it back here and I am going to paste it into OneNote. So, uh, here you see want what I got. Um, and this is from the Crossroads Kids Ministry. And this is a small object lesson about being content with the things that you have. Okay. Um, and I thought that was a great video. So I just want to keep that in here as a reference. Again, putting it in tables kind of keeps all of that stuff together. Um, and now I kind of have a complete little kit on my uh, notes for my sermon for that day. Okay. All right. That's the first page, sermon notes. Um, like I said, today's going to be quick and easy. The next page that I want to share is Bible study. All right. So here's my Bible study, my master Bible study. Um, I've used this a number of times. This one, uh, is blank so that you can see again, how it is structured. There are multiple tables in here. And so you see this first one is a two column table and I have, uh, one side here, one column and one column over here. This is a place for you to put the author of the book uh, that you're studying. So up at the top here, you would put the chapter and the book that you are studying. So let's say it's the, you know, the book of John and you're doing verse 316. Okay. All right. So you might put in here who the author of the book is. 
and most Bibles these days will give you that information in the beginning of the chapter. So you can list in here who it was written by and what audience they were speaking to in this book. Many of the different authors of the books of the Bible were writing to different groups. Some were writing to the Jewish people. Some were writing to the Gentile people. Some were writing to uh, creators of new churches and that kind of thing. So sometimes it's important to know the audience, who this person was writing to or talking to uh, when they were writing this information. Okay. And then the location or the setting of where this was taking place. And then the action. Why was it written? Why was it written? What was the purpose of that? Okay. All right. And then down here, uh, there is a place for words to know. As a former teacher, I love vocabulary. I love words, learning new words, um, and picking out important words in verses, I think is important. So I wanted to be able to put the verse down here and what the word was that we might be studying and actually a definition of that word. So I've given myself a place here for three words, but if I want to add more and I get down here to this last, uh, section, I can always uh, put my cursor there, hit the tab key and add another row if I want to add another word. Okay. All right. The next thing that I like to look at when I study a Bible verse are who are the people in that chapter? So again, I have a place to put the verse, who the person is that we might be studying. Is it King David? Is it Esther? Is it Daniel? Is it Jesus? Is it John? You know, who is it? Who is it that we're studying? And what is the importance of that particular person in this particular verse? Okay. Then I have down here the basic principle. You know, what are we studying about? Like the last one, uh, the, the sermon that I talked about, you know, maybe we're studying the, the, the concept of contentment and being happy with what we have. Maybe we're studying uh, the, the idea of pressing on through difficult times, moving forward uh, through difficult times to get to that goal that we need to reach. That basic principle can go in here. And then there's some room for me to write what I learned uh, in studying that particular principle. Okay. Again, over here, I have life application. So how does what I learned in this particular chapter and verse of the Bible, how does that appeal uh, or apply to my life and where I am at, uh, you know, in my own personal growth at this moment. And then again, I made a section down here for additional notes. Okay. So again, I could add a video down here. I could add a motivational sticker or, uh, you know, print or something like that. Um, I just think that is really helpful. So for example, uh, with the Philippians verse that we just did, you know, if you do a Google search and you look for an image, uh, you might find something like this and you might think, you know what, that's kind of nice. I like that. I'm going to put that in there. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize. Okay. So maybe that's a good motivational thing, um, to put in there. Okay. All right. So that's pretty easy. I think Bible study this way, um, two simple pages, really the Bible study page and the sermon page that really, uh, help you keep, um, a good handle on what you've been studying in the Bible and learning through your spiritual journey. Well, to all you pastors and preachers and spiritual leaders out there, those of you who enjoy, uh, reading the Bible and studying and keeping your notes in a trusted place like OneNote. Um, I hope this is helpful to you. And if it is, please go ahead and give me a like, hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you have not already. Turn your notification bells all the way on so that you don't miss any future videos. And until the next one, here's hoping that you could live a more organized and simplified life through better planning. I use OneNote. Until next time. Okay. Bye.